Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video I'm going to show you my latest purchase. I bought this car a few weeks ago to replace my Lincoln Town car that blew up. Which I am actually deciding to fix by the way. I like that Town car too much to let it go. Um, but it's not on the property anymore. I had to uh, take it to the place I work so that it's not around my mom's property and more bothering everybody. But uh, this here is my new car. 1994 Cadillac Fleetwood um, it's not a brome it's a base model which kind of sucks but you know it's not the end of the world um, picked it up for two grand uh, about 80 miles from here 80 miles north of here um, it didn't need much work it needed a uh, rear brakes and rear brake lines and then the floor pans were pretty rusty so I welded in some floors and uh, put some new exhaust on it since that was pretty rusty too. Um, I still need to replace some mufflers. I ain't done that yet, but uh, it's got new exhaust pipes on it from the uh, mufflers back anyway. Um, it is one year older than the Lincoln, uh, but these were pretty much the same throughout the entire generation, uh, especially 94 through 96. 93 was a little different. It had a different engine and a slightly different interior, but uh, the exterior was the same, so not not too much different uh, to go about there. Um, all in all, exterior-wise, it's in really good shape. There's a couple of scratches here and there. The car is parked under a tree, um, so there's scratches on the windshield, scratches on the body. I already buffed it. I couldn't get them to come out. Made the paint look pretty shiny, but uh, as far as the scratches go, they're, they're still on there. It's got the chrome um, alongside the bottom, and that's got some blemishes on it here and there. I buffed that too, and I couldn't get them to come out very well, so it is what it is. Previous owner was nice enough to put new tires on the front, but I guess he ran out of money when it came to the rear because they were bald, so I put new tires on the rear. I didn't go with white walls because I'm not going to be the guy that has white walls on the rear and black walls on the front so I just went with black walls and maybe next time around when I need new tires I'll throw white walls on it but uh, they're, pre they're getting pretty expensive so we'll see about that um, it's red there's not rust except for the rear bumper here that's pretty rusty uh, for some reason um, Cadillac opted to use real stainless steel chrome on the front and rear bumpers and these panels here except for the fender skirt which is aluminum um, which is weird because on my Oldsmobile, this is 1983, it's 10 years older than this car, they used aluminum bumpers on the front and rear uh, for the exact reason of preventing rust. So you'll never see a rusty rear bumper on an 80s Cadillac, but on the 90s ones, they can rust out. So rear bumper is pretty rusty, and I, I've, got, I've got my eyes on a parts car in Wisconsin. I'm thinking about going over and grabbing for the rear bumper, but it's pretty rusty underneath and the anchors and stuff. I don't really want to deal with it, so it might just end up being like that. But apart from that, no rust on the actual body. The paint's in good shape. There's no orange peeling or anything like that. Apart from the scratches here and there, it's in good shape. The chrome's all in good shape. Hood ornaments intact. The grill has got a little bit of a blemish here. And then on the actual bumper, one of these plates here is missing, the chrome plate. Uh, this guy, previous owner, backed out of his garage, turned a steering wheel a little too hard one at one point. Previous owner turned out of a, uh, a garage a little quick and kind of bumped the car here. That piece here is loose. This piece is loose. And the... Uh, headlight here is just a bit crooked um, and this is a new lens so it's good the actual body didn't get damaged and the actual bumper didn't get damaged but uh, it did kind of mess with this this area a little bit is all out of whack now but uh, other than that there's no real significant damage on the body so I'm happy about that um, as far as interior goes um, I don't have the keys on me right now, so I can't start it for you, but uh, it is nice. I mean, I've already got all my shit in there from the Lincoln because I didn't waste no time uh, with it uh, being my uh, traveling car. But it's got leather seats, 
Um, they're nice. They're not worn out or anything like that. I'm not a huge fan of the color. This is dark red. I much prefer like a light red color, but it's better than blue or black. So there's that. Um, power door locks, all that fancy stuff, power windows. It's pretty nice. Um, it's got this little tear right here in the seat. And this switch was gone uh, when I got it. I actually took this off the passenger side because you know how hard it is to find one of these just only recline switches on eBay for these cars. Um, they always come with the heater, the memory seat controls, and uh, heated seat controls, the whole console that kind of goes across here. Because the base model Fleetwoods are so uh, uncommon it would seem that nobody sells these things so this is actually off the passenger side and now the passenger side doesn't have one but uh apart from that the only other thing that was broken on it was this armrest slash cup holder here you just pull this little switch on the back of this and the cup holder comes out this piece was broken when i got it this bezel that goes around this has a clip right here or a, a uh, hinge thing um that sort of snaps into this little uh thing right over here and that's what holds the uh, cup holder shut um that was broken off when i got it so it wouldn't uh it wouldn't shut it stayed open but on that um you know it's it's a fairly nice car it's, it's not quite nearly as loaded as my lincoln was but uh it's got your automatic headlights um auto down uh driver's side window uh you know, full control of the seats and the, and the windows and power mirrors, power locks, all that stuff from the driver's door. Um, ugh. It does have a tape deck, which is a absolute requirement for me when I buy a car. It's got to have a tape deck because uh, those of you who watch this channel know that I have a uh, very large collection of cassette tapes, probably over 300 at this point, uh, cassette tapes. So all my vehicles have a tape deck in it, and if I get one that doesn't have one, I put one in. But, other than the tape deck, it also has a CD player. And I've never had a car with a CD player before. I've never owned anything new enough. Um, now I have one, and I actually went and bought a CD for the first time uh, a few days ago. And then I put it in, and oh my god, I actually liked the way it sounded. It's, you know, I always say a good tape player sounds just as good as a CD. When you got a good tape player and a CD in the same unit and you use one back to back, you can hear the difference and the CDs are a whole hell of a lot, uh, you know, better than the tapes. So I went and kind of splurged a little bit and bought a couple hundred bucks worth of CDs and uh, this car actually has a uh, CD holder in here. So I've got uh, a few of my CDs that I bought um, in there as well as some tapes because I still like to listen to tapes. So that's in there. Um, it's got your automatic climate controls. Uh, you know, it's got a ABS, trash control, uh, st stability control, all that fun stuff. It's got all that. Um, yeah, not much else to really tell in here. It doesn't. It's got the sunglasses uh, compartment, and then it's got this, which I. It's got an electrical connector in there. Um, but uh, there's nothing in here, so I wonder if maybe this was meant for something or if it was an option this car didn't have. But it's kind of weird just to have this flap here that you can't really uh, do anything with. Um, it's got a compass that doesn't work. That's not, uh, that's aftermarket. It's always pointing south. We're pointing uh, west right now and it's, it's pointed south. So uh, we're, I'm gonna have to take that off or, or fix it or something because it's kind of useless but cool nonetheless um not to make this too long of a video here but now that i've showed you a little bit of, of what the deal is i'm gonna uh tell you a bit of you know things i like about it things i don't like about it uh from the perspective of someone who uh very much enjoys these older luxury cars um if you're thinking about buying one of these now's your time to listen up the first thing that I noticed when I bought this car is the door that is as far as it opens it does not swing very far at all so when I'm trying to get in and out of this car this big old heavy door it doesn't swing any further than that and that's a, a really I mean 
I like my doors to swing wide when I get in my car. And I'm not even like a big guy or anything. I'm I'm pretty tall, but as far as the actual like weight goes, I don't need the door to open wide, but I just like to have it open wide because this is a uh, it seems like it should go one more click outwards and it doesn't. Um so that was the first thing I noticed that I had to complain about on that. Uh, that and the uh, extremely small mirrors on this. I'm pretty sure these mirrors are as small, maybe even smaller than the mirrors on my Oldsmobile. And this is 10 years newer than that. So that's uh, kind of unexcusable um, for a, a Cadillac, a car meant for old people, would have such small uh, mirrors. And they're not even heated either. And I don't even think this car offered heated mirrors, even on the Bromes, which is another complaint I have about it, is that my Lincoln had heated side view mirrors. They would heat up with the, the rear defrost. So in the wintertime, you, if you had frost on your mirror, you, could, uh, you wouldn't have to wait until the actual window defrost or heated it up, the window up enough to get the mirror to start to defrost. It would just defrost it uh, electrically. Um, so there's that. Uh, it does have cornering lights, which are also a necessity for me at this point. Um, I love like cornering lights. I live in the country, and when it's winter time and it's night, it's, it can be pretty hard to see the drive um, to get out here. So uh, I like to have the cornering lights so I can see where I'm going. That busted one works too, so you know it just doesn't look very good. Um, other thing that I really like about it is how smooth it is. It's a very smooth ride. My dad, he doesn't like these kinds of cars at all. He rode in it, and he was almost speechless with how smooth the ride was. So if that says anything for you, um, it's it's a very smooth ride. It's the smoothest riding car I've ever had for sure. It's got air shocks in the rear. Um, I don't know if it's got air shocks in the front or not. I know it's got coil springs all the way around. It's not an airbag like the Lincoln was. It's like the like this Mercury is here. Um, it has this Mercury's got leaf springs uh, with air shocks. This has got coil springs with air shocks. Um, I don't know about the front though. I haven't really looked. It certainly feels like it does though. It's very comfortable. Um, I really like the way this car looks, especially from the front. It's got a very nice style to it. This Cadillac style, classic Cadillac. Much better looking than the front of the Lincoln was. But the rear of this car, I don't much care for the rear of this car. I think it's a bit boring and featureless. Just the, you know, the Cadillac, dual Cadillac, uh, I guess, fins, you could call it. It's not really fins at this point, but the, the vertical taillights. They look much better on the DeVille from the same year. The really skinny ones that are just like a straight, like a line, not more wide like these ones. I don't really care for the rear of this car. It's got power antenna. That's going to be fun to replace when it breaks. Um, all in all, I like the Lincoln a lot more than this car. This will work for what it is. I mean, it's a very smooth car. I just drove a three-hour trip today in it um, earlier today, and... And it's a very smooth car. It's very, uh, it's comfortable enough for, for a long distance trip. Um, it was reliable. It made it all the way. Check engine light never came on. I was never worried I was gonna stall or, or not get where I was going. But uh, all in all, it, it's uh, pretty lacking in luxury features. It doesn't have a lot of stuff. And the stuff that it does have is uh, either too complicated to be worth having, or uh, too simple to be considered a luxury feature um, and I'll get into that in a little, little bit here when I get into the the uh, driver's seat of it but the other thing that I will point out is that the uh, the car is very disproportionate I think this rear glass here this rear window is really long and kind of stretched looking and then the trunk isn't long enough to compensate for that in my opinion this car looks rather uh, cut off in the rear you've got the front looks really nice it's got that nice bubble caprice look but the trunk and the rear door, trunk's too short, rear door's too long. I think if they shortened up the rear door a little bit and lengthened the trunk, it would look a lot better. So it's kind of got a, a, an odd look to it. This kind of reminds me of the 90s, I think it's a Lexus, or maybe a, a whatever Nissan's luxury brand is, with the really long rear doors. I don't think I really like that all that much. But it's okay, it's what it's whatever. I don't look, I don't see the exterior of the car when I'm driving it, right? It's got the LT1 motor, Cor Corvette motor, um, which I know uh, are known to cause some trouble when they get around 150,000 miles or so. Um, it's 
start have head gasket problems. I know these uh, water pumps are kind of goofy on these. It's a reverse flow water pump, this dude right here. I haven't worked on it at all. It's It runs good, so I haven't been uh, haven't had the need to do anything up here, but I am aware that uh, the LT1s are not a perfect engine. I was very surprised at the fact that a lot of people um, would say that the uh, LT1 is like a powerhouse, like, oh, this engine's a racehorse, it's it's a rocket ship, you know, this the, the, the 94 Cadillac Fleetwood, they got really hot when they got the LT1. This car is slow as shit. It's, it's not fast. Um, I think the town car might have been faster than this, not that I uh, go around racing these luxury cars, but you can tell when you're accelerating this thing that it is slow as crap. It doesn't like to go. It's, it's very, uh, very much geared for old people. You have to really step on it to be able to go anywhere. Um, and at that point, I don't like to be so hard on my transmission, so I don't, uh, I don't get on it. So I get a lot of tailgaters because they don't like that I'm going 20 in a 40 when it, it's, I've been driving for a mile. But, uh, you know, it's whatever. Uh, I'll get into the interior so this video isn't too long. The interior is where I really get disappointed with this car. Um, it's, apart from the door not opening wide enough, it's very lacking in uh, features in the interior. Um, and I'll sort of go through them in no particular order, just listing them off as I, as I think of them. Um, so the first things first here is the uh, steering wheel. My Lincoln has the buttons. It's a two-spoke steering wheel. This is a four-spoke, which I don't care for, but it's it could be worse. Um, has the buttons that control the radio and the buttons that control the cruise control and buttons that would control the temp and fan speed for the automatic climate control. This doesn't have any of that shit. It's just a plain Jane steering wheel with a horn pad in the middle. So if you want to control the radio, you got to reach all the way over here and mess with it. And in my case, I have to lean forward and take my hand off fully off the steering wheel to uh, adjust the radio as well as the temp controls, climate controls. Um, I'm not a huge fan of that. Um... As far as interior storage goes, again, it's very lacking. The Lincoln had cubbies on the doors, um, on the armrest, and the door would lift up, and you could put stuff in them. It also had your dual center console, which this technically has because these are two different compartments, but uh, it had two separate center consoles, the Lincoln did. So you had one, two, three, four storage compartments plus the glove box, and the glove box on this, that is the world's smallest glove box I have ever seen that is the back of the glove box right here, and that's the front. You can't even fit a single cassette tape the short way on this in this glove box. It doesn't work. So I couldn't, couldn't even put my tapes in here, which is where all my tapes are in all my cars. I am pretty sure the glove box in that old Mercury Comet right there is bigger than this. And for a luxury car, that's just inexcusable. I can't think of a single good reason why you'd have a glove box so goddamn small. Um... In a, in a car like, like this, you know, you'd expect a big glove box like this, but nope, that is a very small glove box, very much don't like that, that was one of the things I was complaining about right away. Um, another thing is the lack of instrumentation, obviously you can't see it right now because the engine's off and I don't have the key, but there is a fuel gauge and that is it, no temp gauge, no alt gauge, the Lincoln had an alt gauge and a temp gauge. Um, it did not have an oil pressure gauge, but that's pretty standard for luxury cars. Most of them don't. Um, but this doesn't even have a temp gauge, so I don't even know if it's overheating or not. Um, it also doesn't have a trip computer. It has, you know, your tr basic trip, trip A, but it doesn't have fuel economy. It doesn't have miles left in the tank. It doesn't have average fuel, you know, whatever. It doesn't have uh, different drive modes. The Lincoln had a sport mode. That was weird, right? Um, this doesn't have any of that shit. It's got a gas gauge and a speedometer, and that is it. Um, that's that's a that's quite disappointing for me. Um, the vents controls are uh, very lacking. This one's good; it's right where you want it. That one's not. The airflow cuts off at about here. So when I'm driving and I'm sweating my ass off, and I got the AC on, I can't feel any air on you know this side of my face. It's all on this side, and it just it bugs me. Um, so that's that's a complaint. Um, 
which leads me to my next complaint, which is the climate control. You can't pick where the air comes out on the vents on these. And I know this is actually a major complaint, uh, one of the most common complaints about Fleetwood owners of this generation, is this climate control is fully automated. So when you have the AC on, the car senses, oh, he wants to be cold, and he wants it at 69 degrees, it's 85 degrees, so we're going to turn the AC on full blast on the vents, the defrost, and the floor. That's nice. When you ask for hot air, you get the floor and maybe the defrost if it's if it senses that there is frost on the windshield, but you'll never get hot air out of these vents. Not that it's a problem right now. It's 75 degrees right now when I'm making this video and I'm actually pretty sweaty right now in this car, but I can see how in the wintertime that will become quite an issue for me if I can't get warm air out of my uh, dash vents because I don't want my fingers to be cold when I'm driving. You know what I mean? So... That's going to have to be changed. This here unit is interchangeable with the 94 through 96 Buick Roadmaster, which has the digital display, but you can pick where the heat or where the air comes out of. Um, the only thing that uh, you, you have you sacrifice with that is this outside temp function here. You can't see the outside temperature with a Roadmaster. So if I were to swap those over, um, I wouldn't have any way of... Uh, seeing how cold it is outside, which is a luxury feature that's a little useless, but it was nice when I had it on the Lincoln. Um, apart from that, those are the major things I don't like about it. There's a couple little things here and there. One of them that's sort of riding the edge of being a pain in the ass and being a smaller thing is this radio. It's very, very, very advanced. This is the most advanced sound system I've ever dealt with. It's very good when I'm playing a CD or the radio, not so much when I'm playing a tape. And it's very complicated, much too complicated for its own good. If you look at this, you might think it's just a standard uh, Delco double DIN radio unit. Um, you've got your your equal or your fade and your balance uh, behind the uh, tune knob and the power knob or volume knob. Um, you know, right, left, front, rear but you don't see any knobs or sliders for bass and treble. Well, that's what these are, and they're preset equalization. So you go into these, you hit set, and you hold down one of these buttons, and it'll flash some messages on the screen for what your uh, equalization... It's basically a graphic equalizer, but it's electronically set. And you just bump these buttons, the seek button and scan button up and down for your, your uh, different levels of, uh, you know, your 15K and 20K and 25K. I don't even know what any of that means. But uh, you adjust them all, and you eventually adjust to the point where it's playing at the uh, frequency that you'd like. And then you can go to the next one and set that one, and the next one, set that one. So you have five different equalization presets. But that's not all. You have five different equalization presets for the tape, the CD, and the radio, AM, FM, all separate from one another. I could set preset A to be super bassy with no treble for the radio, but then when I go to t uh, cassettes, I can set it to be super trebly with, with no bass, and it will save it like that. So you get five different presets for each of the different modes on this, and it doesn't end there. Each different radio preset presets to one of these. So if I had the station 88.7 that I like to listen to around here, it's a pretty good local station, preset to one. You get five equalization presets for one radio station, and that uh, that applies for all of these, and you get five radio station presets for AM and FM. So you have pretty much unlimited equalization presets on this car. That's too much. I like to set them at one thing and keep it there for everything. I don't need five different equalization presets for 1,500 different uh, ways of listening to music. You know what I mean? They could have made use of their money a lot better than this sound system. I'll tell you what. This switch doesn't do anything. It's aftermarket. It's not hooked up to anything. They might have put it there to toggle the antenna or something, but I've taken that bottom part of the dash off to look at it, and there's no power going to that switch, so I might end up just taking this off. Um, apart from, you know, the uh, equalization being really complicated, the tape deck doesn't uh, really work all too well. And this is a brand new unit, by the way. The one that I had in it, uh, the internal fuse blew. And you can't replace those because they're soldered right into the board. 
So I bought a from the factory unopened the uh, label that pr- that protected the screen was still on it uh, off of eBay. It was new old stock. It was still sealed. The, a factory Cadillac dealership box was sealed. Um, it was dated 1995 on it. Um, and the tape player doesn't work worth a fuck. I had to take it apart and replace the belt, which is sort of standard. But the sound channels only come out of the right side sound channels. So I don't have any uh, audio coming out of my left speakers, which sucks. Um, but apart from that, the player gets hot after about only an hour of playing and the belt slips and it slows your playback down to the point where you're listening to a song and it's so slowed down that the uh, bass and treble aren't even sensing correctly and the bass doesn't sound like anything anymore. You kind of get that woo sound on it and it it uh, is at the point where um, I would almost rather listen to strictly CDs than I would having cassettes, which is uh, not ideal for me because I really like cassettes and I have a lot more cassettes than I do CDs. But it is what it is. I know this video is getting pretty long. Thank you uh, for those of you who uh, are still watching this. Not many people probably are. But uh, if you are, thanks for sticking with it. I'm almost done here. Sun visors are another... uh, complaint I've got. It's only got one sun visor. You can move it um, over to the side. So if you were driving and the sun was setting over here and it was in your eyes, you can move it over here, but then you have nothing over here. So, you know, you can't, if the sun's over here in your eyes and it's over here, you're kind of going to have to pick one or the other uh, way to get blinded, I guess. The Lincoln had two of them. You'd fold this one up over here, and then another one would come over and fold up right here. You'd have dual sun visors. That was nice. Um, the Lincoln also had telescoping movable reading lights up here. You could push them uh, to angle them towards you or towards the middle or towards uh, the passenger. Um, this Cadillac does not have that. It has these overhead lights which are off right now because the key's not in it, but uh, these overhead lights here um, work decently enough if you want to see directly in your lap. But if you want to see something over here, I have tried just turning on the entire lighting system in this at night when I'm trying to look at, like, what song's next on the tape I'm listening to. Nope, can't see it. You can't see the middle of the car with these lights, and that is terrible. So... There is that. Now I'm going to get out of here because I'm sweating. But as you can see, if I had known how uh, base this car was before I bought it, I probably would have thought twice about buying it. I always wanted a 90s Fleetwood. I think they're cool. I think they look nice. And I've never, ever, ever owned a car with these fiber optic fender indicators. And I've always wanted one. And they're cool. But they don't make up for the fact that this car doesn't have any luxury features that I've grown accustomed to with my Lincoln Town car. So you get you you, know, you take some and you leave some. You get things you want. And you have to sacrifice things you want, and you know is what it is. But my advice to anybody who is thinking about buying one of these Fleetwoods is watch this video and uh, think about: Do you actually want a car that looks semi decent? Uh, or do you actually want a car that uh, isn't the greatest looking but has features to compensate for that? Um, the Cadillac, if I was a Cadillac buyer in the 90s and I saw this, I would be very disappointed because this car is not up to the quality that like the 70s Cadillacs were. The Fleetwood Talisman, my ultimate dream car, blows this car out of the water as far as features go. Um, and that is just... It's just sad. There's no other way to put it. Uh, to put the, you know, icing on the cake, trunk, auto trunk pull down, this car either doesn't have it or it's broken. But either way, it doesn't pull down the trunk automatically when you shut it. And that was something that the Lincolns did. <sighs> well, this video is half hour long at this point and if I do choose to upload it thank you for watching this and uh, 
I hope I entertain some people. This is probably the longest video I have on YouTube, and I could have split it up into two parts, but uh, I didn't think that it was going to run this long. So, thanks for watching. Um, I will start to release more videos as it's warmer out and I can actually be outside. I know I've got uh, work to do on the Comet. I've got work to do on the Monterey. I'll be uh, re probably rebuilding my Lincoln transmission. And I've still got to install the cruise control system on the Oldsmobile. So, uh, we've got a lot of stuff to look out for. Um, and I will see you then.